morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. Welcome all of you to our sixth virtual meeting. Thank you for your time to join us today. Today, we expect to make more progress with your cooperative spirit. The order of the session today is as follows. Uh, first, reviewing the remaining paragraph 3 bis and 12a of section G, which you can find the co-facilitator proposal in the annex A of the agenda of today's meeting as a pre-session document. Second, reviewing the reflection of your views expressed during the November 19, uh, 2020 of the virtual working group and the input received by December 18, uh, 2020, which you can find it attached with the circulated email telling with all of you yesterday as a document beforehand. And third, reviewing of uh, virtual working group progress of section H as revised post for the uh, 3rd December 2020 meeting of the virtual working group, which you can find the co facilitator device recommendation in Annex B of the agenda of today's meeting. Finally, we will talk about the next step for our remaining issues for the next couple of weeks. Those are all for today meeting. Hope we have a good discussion and can make much more progress. Now I will turn the microphone to the Secretariat Nalini for housekeeping announcement. Nalini, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Karabon. So um, I wish you all a happy new year and I hope it's a safe, healthy and a peaceful one for all of us. Um, to start off with, just to uh, mention that this uh, meeting will be recorded and the recording will be made available on our website. Um, the documentation that will be discussed uh, today um, have been posted on our SICOM, um website on the, under the Virtual Working Group 2 um, dedicated space. Um, if you could please um, raise your hand uh, to take the floor um, and then I'll give uh, people um, uh, the uh, floor according to the raised hand order. Uh, we would like to try and uh, be as efficient as possible. So please do limit your um, intervention to a couple of minutes if possible, uh, so that then we can have uh, more interaction with the colleagues. We do have quite a number of you joined us today. Um, please use the chat box just to ask for the uh, floor. Uh, we would like to try and see, you know, to really have dialogue uh, during this meeting. So uh, we would like you to raise your hand and take the floor uh, to to make your intervention if uh, if possible. So I will now, with that, hand over to Carissa, um, who will take us through to section G. Carissa, you have the floor. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on, on US time and good afternoon, good evening to those of you who are elsewhere. So we are, as Tirupan noted, Tirupan noted, we are going to try to cover three agenda items today. We're going to try to capture our remaining agenda items from section G, which include 3 bis and 12A. And we are going to try to cover the uh, science policy interface and we're going to try to get back to section H, which we, um, as Terapur noted, talked about, had talked about much earlier, and try to uh, to address the comments that, that you had in section H. So we are planning to spend about 35 minutes on section G, then turn to the science policy interface, and then come back to section H with about 20 minutes left, which is, I think, all we think it's going to take. So I would like to, uh, as Nalini noted, move as quickly as we can. We've been trying to get through 12, uh, 3 BIS and 12A for several weeks now. Um, 3 BIS, as you will recall, is the consolidation of your comments and submissions with respect to a periodic review process or some sort of review process uh, associated with uh, the with 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 the reporting under section G and uh, 
12A is the reporting frequency and um, other sort of odds and ends that came up through through 12A, which of course is appointment that is that is important to everyone. So once we've completed those paragraphs, then we will, I believe, have had a solid discussion with respect to all of uh, Section G. And to your point, and I have spent a, a fair amount of time working on your suggestions for G. And right before the holidays, we had put together all of your thinking. Uh, and we are just waiting for your three BIS and your 12A comments. And then after that, we will look forward to putting those all together. I think paragraphs one and paragraph two are already on uh, in our summary of the meeting. And so we can look, of course, back at that. But then we will be able to look at look at G all together, as I know uh, many of you have been interested in doing. So with that, um, maybe just one housekeeping note before we start with paragraph three bis, which is that in the uh, in the collection of, of submissions and comments with from, I believe it was December 3rd, perhaps, when we last went back to Section G, uh, we did have a comment from Brazil with respect to the name of the instrument. We have been, I think, talking about that from the beginning and the need to go back to a, a full look at what we're going to call this. There has been no decision with respect to the name and the form um, that this, that this, uh, revitalized uh, strategic approach will take. And so we have added that to our summary, but we will also go in um, and be sure that their concern, uh, which I believe a number of us share, is also included as a footnote in, uh, in, in, the, in the text. So with that, um, I'd like to turn to, to three bits and to open discussion on that. Mariana, could I ask you to, uh, uh, you're all, all, always right there with me. Thank you so much. So on the screen now in front of you, I hope you can all see three bis. Uh, as we noted, this is a paragraph that we took. There was a paragraph uh, that came out of, I believe, OEWG3, perhaps. Um, I'm not sure if it was discussed at IP3, but I think not. Um, and we then put into one paragraph all of your views and all of your comments and the existing text as we had it in, in coming out of, of IP3 and OEWG3 and put it all together. So it is a bit of a mishmash. Um, I think that you can see that as you read through. But I would also note that in your submissions, uh, we did, there were a number of questions uh, about whether this was a, a review process that was needed. I think Canada and Brazil and the EU and Japan and a few others you know, sort of had some, had some questions about whether there was a need for this periodic review. And there was also some confusion and a number of questions about whether this review process was supposed to be uh, equivalent or take the place of the independent evaluation that, that the strategic approach just went through a couple of years ago. So just to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing, this review process is not the independent evaluation. The independent evaluation is something that's different. It comes up in paragraphs 13 and 14, primarily in paragraph 14 of section G. This, it would be a review process with respect to the reports that are received from, uh, from stakeholders. So the other uh, comment that came up, um, and I'm, I'm forgetting, I'm sorry, who it was at the moment, but there was also in one of the submissions a suggestion that perhaps uh, if there wasn't support for, the, for, this, for this process uh, as a matter of of the, of the agreement uh, itself at the end of the instrument itself, that there may be some interest in some sort of voluntary process and that that could also be discussed today. So two sections on 3B, one about this periodic review group and another about country reviews. And you see that that starts to come up uh, a little bit, I believe in B, but for, uh, no, not in B, I'm sorry, in D. Uh, and then again, uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier in our other discussion on G. So with that, what I would like to do is um, open up the discussion for the general ideas that are in 3BIS. 
what might make sense is I know from your submissions and they've been available online for a while now that there are some concerns with this idea of a periodic review process. So if you are one of the stakeholders that that has an interest in this and perhaps put forward some of the ideas in our in our earlier sessions in Bangkok uh, or perhaps even in Uruguay, uh, it would be great if you might take the floor a little bit early and and offer your colleagues and, and fellow stakeholders some some sense of perhaps what you had in mind with respect to this periodic review process, and that may may help uh, further the discussion. So Nalini, I think uh, if we can use our usual process, please, I will turn the floor over to you and ask you to, um, in accordance with those who have raised their hands through the feature, uh, call on folks. And uh, again, as Nalini noted, um, it is the chat box is getting a little bit difficult for everyone to sort of manage. And so we would like to preserve the chat box for um, you know, quick answers to questions that that others may have, but more importantly, for for letting Nalini know if there if there's a problem or if you wanted to make uh, um, an intervention and for some reason couldn't raise your hand. So Nalini, with that, may I turn the floor over to you, please, for for co opening comments on three bits. Okay, so no one's asking the floor yet, but perhaps uh, we have Vasilius from the EU member states. Thank you. Yes, hello. I hope you can hear me well. We can, thank you. Great. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and happy and healthy new year. On behalf of the European Union and its member states, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Carissa, for introducing uh, into this uh, uh, item of the agenda, we have we seen some more challenges in this area than in other areas of our discussion today. Um, to begin uh, with, uh, the heading is uh, uh, what we see on screen um, addresses reporting. Actually, this is reporting and reviewing. And these are two key elements that um, are already addressed um, in a more, um, uh, say, uh, consolidated way uh, in uh, Section G of the Compilation of Recommendations uh, under uh, 3A. So uh, this uh, three bis, uh, the way it is formulated now, uh, it uh, seems to be uh, an elaboration of 3A. Uh, what uh, we see uh, here is um, that there is some emphasis on uh, country reviewing process. Um, this is more or less captured in, uh, in the letters A to D. And there is a, a further point, um, which is the evaluation of progress on issues of concern, which is under E. Now, uh, particularly uh, the reviewing uh, uh, process, um, it, it is uh, rather difficult to, uh, to assess this uh, if we don't have the whole clean text, but I understand where we are in process uh, right now. The language seems uh, uh, very, very strong and very, if I may say so, uh, almost binding. Um, we would prefer uh, a language that uh, stresses on the voluntary character of this reviewing uh and uh, added to this uh would like to reiterate our suggestion uh in our written comment uh in a, a similar uh, area of this discussion um that uh we think that uh, as reporting and reviewing uh, regards uh we should also take into account existing and ongoing works um, like uh, from uh, what is done uh, under the conventions, what is done uh, within uh, the uh, work of the international organizations, 
Um, there are also reviewing processes in the sustainability agenda 2030, more broad, uh, broader in scope for sure, uh, but uh, probably there are uh, in these areas of work relevant uh, works or uh, parts of the reports that can be and should be considered in this exercise. Um, so, uh, summarizing uh, our comment to uh, 3A, uh, 3B's A to D, uh, we are at the moment uh, rather hesitant to accept it in the way this is formulated. Um, but of course, we are open for discussion of uh, uh, for improvements. Uh, as regarding as regards. Uh, E, uh, the evaluation uh, of um, issues of concern, uh, I, I would just like to, uh, to uh, recall that there is uh, a parallel discussion uh, in uh, the other virtual working group. And what I understand is that uh, they, the colleagues or the participants there uh, they are developing uh, elaborate ideas on how to do this, including uh, the, the period or the frequency, but it, it's not the only item that it is discussed there. So I think or we think that uh, this parallel work should be uh, considered uh, in, uh, in, this, in the discussion of uh, this group. Thank you very much. Okay, so next we have uh, Mr. Kwaja from SDPI Pakistan. Mr. Kwaja, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, again, uh, appreciating the uh, hard work uh, and time spent by the co facilitators in, uh, in, in sharing this, uh, uh, this document with us. Uh, I have uh, I have some thoughts on um, first A, and um, this is also uh, mentioned by one of our the, one of our participants, um, Jacqueline. Uh, uh, is it the, uh, the the group? Is it the group and the committee are the same? Or, or no, they are two different bodies. And then also, uh, uh, what about the membership of both? Uh, how the working group would be constituted, and uh, how the review committee would be constituted? Uh, who are going to be the representatives members of these two. And then also a, a comment on E, uh, uh, that is with regard to uh, on, on issue of concern. Now, uh, could we uh, clarify uh, the issue of concerns at what level? Uh, is it at the national level or regional level or international level? Um, thank, you, uh, thank you so much, these two comments, thank you. So uh, maybe Nalini, just uh, if we could look uh, in the chat box, I see that Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline does have a question and that just um, that uh, Mr. Gonza has just reiterated that. So uh, of course, this is text that was put on the table by others in an earlier meeting. So I am, uh, Chair Korn and I are speculating as much as you are. It would be my assessment. Um, in putting this together and pulling from from other parts of the text as it came to us, that the review committee and the periodic review working group, uh, that the sentiments are the same. That this is that this this is the same group. Those were two different um, pieces uh, that seem to be talking and speaking to the same issue. So I believe the answer in in three bis B to to Jacqueline and to uh, SDPI's question is yes. I believe they are intended to be to be the same group. And of course, in terms of who would be in the group, I think that that is in your hands. Um, if if you decide that there is going to be a group, then we would need to consider who would be in the group and, and perhaps some of their sort of very broad parameters on how it would operate. So that, that would be our task today 
uh, if we if we do decide that a periodic group review is something that that is of interest to to you. Okay, so next we have Felix Vetli from Switzerland. Felix, you have the floor. Thank you very much and happy to meet you to everybody. Um, um, thank you for the introduction, also for the colleagues for the first comments. I would like also to uh, support what uh, Vasilios from the Pinuña has mentioned about that we have in the reporting process to consider existing work. So how to, to make a comprehensive kind of, of, of reporting, but not duplicating that we have to report the same findings or the same figures several times to MEAs, to PSYCHEM and so on. So well, how can we find there a comprehensive system that uh, provides synergies? Um, also on the point D, also as, as, uh, as our co-chair has emphasized that currently in the parking lot, we have also this idea of a voluntary peer review process. And I think that could be some, something quite interesting. And I would suggest to include that in the text. A uh, voluntary peer review is a tool, so it does not perhaps be is an alternative to the point D, could be a element of D, or it could be an alternative, can be both. I think just to explain what we mean by that, um, so we haven't made an experience, for example, the OECD is doing peer reviews, so that means you invite the, the OECD is coming to consider, for example, from a uh, chemical, ma uh, chemicals management system, to consider certain aspects you agree on beforehand, and then you provide recommendations. In our view, this is much more impact oriented because you agree on which elements you're looking at, um, because you have you can more easily involve a political level because like, for example, our case would be Switzerland would invite then somebody, experts from other countries or from civil society or from private sector to come in and look at certain elements. So if we have a political, political impact, it could go to a higher level. And that seems in our case much more effective than if a bureaucrat like me is just filling out a form and sending it back to secretariat. So we can more targeted look at certain elements we consider as important. We can have a dialogue with experts from other countries, with stakeholders from in, in our country. And as mentioned, it is voluntary, so there's no obligation. It's rather an opportunity for those countries or stakeholders that are interested by it. So we would strongly suggest to include this tool, volunteer peer review, in this text, taken out of the parking lot and include it. And on the last point, issues of concern, also um, echo echoing was what uh, Vasilios has said, I think we have to pay, be careful to listen also what in the other discussion group is going on. From our point of view, only recommend changes in the program of work would be too weak. We hope for more of issues of concern, that they have also targets, objectives for issues of concerns, but also we'd have to adjust the whole framework on issues of concern. So what is the objective, what we wanted to raise, um, what, what does mean for the program of work, and perhaps also to consider what can't we do in the context of a psych um, post-2020, what should be addressed by other bodies. Thank you. Okay, next on my list, I have Andrew Clark from the US. Andrew, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Nalini, and uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening to everyone. And I, I wish everyone um, a happy new year. It was uh, very strange to go through all of 2020 without seeing any of you uh, in person. And I, I, I sincerely hope that we won't have to do the same in 2021 and we'll be able to meet face, face to face at some point uh, this year. Um, Thanks also to the, uh, I'd like to thank the co-facilitators for their work. I know it was uh, quite a challenge to take all the different input on some of these issues and, and try to uh, put them together like this. So uh, I very much appreciate all that's gone into to, um, working through our, you know, the, the stakeholders input on this. Um, I, I think it's also helpful that as, as Chris noted earlier um, to consider that there are, you know, I guess some, some processes that are maybe uh you know similar but but are are very distinct that we want to make sure that we're we're clear about um so for example this this strikes me as as separate from an independent evaluation which we think is something that is very important for the beyond uh 2020 instrument um to do as as psychom has done and we would want to make sure that that is that is something that that is happening i, I know that will be dealt with elsewhere in the text but just to note that we are we do support that um, and we also support the secretariat collecting, um, you know, stakeholder reports and preparing them for the ICCM, which I, I believe, as the EU noted, um, 
is dealt with at, at the separate uh, paragraph. Um, but I, I do also share many of the concerns raised by the EU, um, and I think that uh, uh, this this review committee idea in here, um, I'm not sure that that is correct. The correct approach. Um, we would appreciate some clarification, though, from those who are um, who are proposing this because it's a bit unclear um, exactly what this group would be and how it would be made up and. Um, it's also a bit unclear why we would need to create a group that to to perform what strikes us as a, a core secretariat function. Um, and also, uh, kind of turning to uh, paragraph uh, subparagraph D, uh, I think that we're a bit concerned um, about reviewing every country once every three or four years. I mean, this strikes us as something that would create a very uh, extensive and overly burdensome process uh, for a voluntary instrument. Um, this isn't even done in a, a you know, typically uh, isn't done for even a legally binding agreement. I know that the, the EU noted that some of this language does strike one, does strike as something uh, more legally binding than voluntary. And I, I think that this might even go beyond that. Um, so we would believe that this kind of country by country scrutiny um, besides the the burden it would it would be to to implement, it, it does strike us as inappropriate for a voluntary instrument. So we, we're worried that with this kind of uh, activity, it really would distract from um, the resources needed to for implementation, and would become really something that would be overwhelming to the system, and would be something that would be too big of a um, a process for us to work out. So we, we don't want to have our, our important work of implementing this agreement, um, this instrument to be crowded out by something like this. So um, I think that we would definitely uh, think that this should be something that would be a, a, a big concern for us. Um, we also see that there's a lot of language and in the, in the EU and others have noted this that might be um, addressed elsewhere or more appropriately addressed elsewhere. Um, including uh, sub paragraph E on the issues of concern or interest, we would want to um, maybe consider that if there is language in here that is either already or could be incorporated elsewhere, that we would consider that and maybe this uh, new paragraph 30 bis might not be uh, necessary. Um, thank you. Okay, so so far no more other requests for the floor. We have Susan Lepner now. Susan, Susan Lepner. everybody, and happy New Year. Um, I've been listening carefully to the for it, and I would believe that Canada's views are very similar. Um, in particular, I think that um, item E issues of concern. The text here is best left to the group working on that, and and may depend on the issue, how and when the time is to evaluate its progress. Uh, in terms of the, the concept here, uh, I think we would just wanna take a quick step back from the text and think a bit about what we want. So definitely in the mechanism, we would want some type of periodic reporting, uh, countries um, sort of report what they're doing and that be done efficiently based on you know, building a database and updating it and using information from other sources if people are reporting in, in multiple places. Then, uh, and a program evaluation, of course, of the uh, overall progress of the, the instrument as we're going on. Other aspects of reviewing, though, um, we would agree that there's some merit in considering some type of voluntary peer review process or support mechanisms in terms of uh, supporting capacity building uh, or development even of best practices on certain aspects. So there may also be, rather than it being, um, which we agree would be a potentially very expensive and maybe not as useful as we would think, a, peer, a very frequent evaluation of each country, look at having this voluntary peer review mechanism for countries who have questions or concerns or needs, um, as well as then a capacity for periodic review of um, certain elements of work. 
So what are the best practices or challenges or gaps in terms of management of a certain type of chemical or development of a, an inventory? And so to have a capacity for targeted uh, reviews of, of certain aspects of chemicals management, which may end up being much more practical and useful than having um, a very heavy, uh, very heavy uh, administrative process of reviewing each country's um, work. Thank you. Okay, next on my list, we have the government of Japan. Suki, you have the floor. This is Suki from Japanese Ministry of Environment. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. And the last, um, the virtual working group, we are, uh, the co-facilitator generously gave us the 10 minutes to explain our um, uh, proposal. So I just go through it real quick. But um, the main purpose of the reporting is to take stock of progress. But the Japan believes that the, instead of submission of reports by country, we can conduct online survey for all stakeholders and present the results in the form of dashboard to be able to oversee the progress on uh, process indicators promptly. And also to see the long-term impact and to do the assessment, we also um, take a lesson from the SDG indicators that has custodian agency. And um, we can also come up with these indicators that which is designated, which designate the custodians to assess the progress within their responsibility. So um, the producing report and uh, reviewing within the voluntary peer review uh, committee or group would only add the, uh, the burden on the, um, the participants, uh, the stakeholders to this uh, beyond 2020 instrument. So we suggest um, not producing the uh, reporting. Thank you very much. Okay, and then next on my list, um, I have Brazil, I have Norway, I have Jacqueline from ULEP, Jill Hanna from GAP, and then Claire Dixon from the UK. So, uh, Priscilla from Brazil, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and very happy new year, colleagues. Uh, this is Priscilla from Brazil's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, first of all, uh, thank you very much, co-facilitators, for your hard work in this complex debate. Um, and we would like to say that uh, for the reasons we have presented in our written inputs, uh, which have been published on the SICOM website, uh, we would like to suggest maybe that the co-facilitators keep paragraph uh, 3Bs from A to E in brackets, as we are not in a position to support this proposal of a periodic review process based on a peer review model. As previously stated, uh, we recognize the importance of making available and sharing relevant information and data, uh, of course, in accordance with national legislation and plans, um, to support the assessment of progress against the objectives and targets in a comprehensive way. So, uh, in our opinion, from our perspective, um, it would be better to establish a flexible, inclusive, and transparent mechanisms for, uh, for taking stock of progress in a broad matter, manner and based on a spirit of cooperation without a judgmental approach. So uh, just to summarize our ideas uh, based on our previous written inputs. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have um, Astra from Norway. You have the floor. Thank you. This is Martha Astrup from uh, Norway and uh, Happy New Year to everyone. And thanks to the co-facilitators co for um, their um, uh, work on this issue. Uh, we just want to echo what has been said by the EU and others uh, and the importance of these reviews being uh, voluntary reviews. And I'm going to keep it short. So I just want to see, say on point E, on issues of concern, that it's important to coordinate this point with the work done in the virtual working group of issues of concern. There's a lot of discussions there on um, review uh, processes on issues of concern. So that was my point, And uh, thank you.
Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, uh, Martha. So next is Jacqueline from UNEP. Jacqueline, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much um, to, to all. Good day. I don't know how to express even in morning or, or afternoon, um, but thank you very much for, for being the 7th of January and already working. That That's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> um, uh, so, I, UNEP, in, in a way, would like to, to also reflect on uh, some of the elements that were said by, by others. Um, first, uh, we think that 3 bis A is necessary. We uh, Anything needs to, to have a, a tracking of the progress somehow, and we need to, to ensure that that happens. Regarding to either B, C, D, or E, we, um, in a way, are, are hesitant somehow to, to see how uh, we can write them in, in the best manner possible. We support what Brazil was saying on the issue of flexibility. And uh, we also uh, understand that this framework will live with us for a long time. And this is the part of the, the paragraphs or the, the instrument that will uh, need to be as static as possible. So we have to be very careful on, on the, the why we are doing this. So for example, the paragraph D re related to each country should be reviewed. Why? If not, what happens? Those questions are big question marks. So uh, uh, maybe an easy solution for, for, for this could also be that uh, taking stock of programs for the sub-management of chemicals and weights with a process facilitated by the Secretariat and with terms of reference to be decided by the ICCM somehow. So. Uh, Things can evolve and will change somehow. Uh, when we are also measuring a report, a, a progress, and we will go into paragraph 12 later, uh, are we measuring progress only to the targets? Uh, there, there is also requests uh, to establish in the financial group a clearinghouse mechanism that will be tracking things. Aren't we going to measure progress on other elements and aspects? So the, the, as the issue of really being open and flexible, I think it's uh, very, very important. Uh, how we, we do it, yes, a review working group or a committee can be can be established, but uh, the, the what uh, type of are essential to have, yes, but we need, uh, we think that we need to have the, an open window for other things that are important. In relation to uh, 3BCE, the, the issues of concern group, as you, uh, we, as we have heard, is discussing many things as well. And uh, what of the, the, one of the big concerns is to have parallel tracks for issues of concern in relation to the rest of the framework. So if we are adding a reporting in particular for these issues of concern that does not belong to the, uh, the, the for example, the targets and indicator framework or to the financial considerations framework, we might be having a, a measuring double things or not measuring some things because we are focused on issues of concern. And the last, thing, I want to reflect very quickly on what happened with the GPA and the Global Plan of Action. And you know that when the EPA, EPI started and, uh, and came, uh, the GPA was forgotten. So we fear that new issues of concern can also take you know, the, 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 the first row, the front line, and forget about targets and indicators that we have to do. So bringing this paragraph E at a different status from the rest of the of the the, the, um, the framework, really uh, is sort of concern to to us. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Appreciate that. Um, and maybe just we are. I do want to turn very quickly to 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 twelve A as well. So I'd like to just maybe in, in advance of those of you who are remaining on the list, just note that. So let's. There's a, clearly a, a momentum, as you know, we took three bis from what came to us and we did not make any assessments about what to, to put in and put out. We simply took it wholesale and put it in for your discussion. Everyone seems to, agree, uh, sorry, no one likes it when I say that. So why do I say there seems to be a sort of general agreement that E has a lot of coordination work that needs to happen with, with the issues of concern group. Tirupan and I absolutely agree with that. We talked about that yesterday. So why don't we just sort of agree going forward that E is something that we would we will we will take to the issues of concern group and then uh, Jacqueline, I assume in a later meeting, much to your point, we will come back and talk about across the whole instrument 
what reporting requirements are there and that they will be moved appropriately and consolidated appropriately. So let's, for the moment, take E, e off of the table in, in terms of discussion. And of course, we've already agreed that there would be, be reporting uh, as, as laid out in the beginning part of A. So with that, let's let's keep going through our list. I am going to cut it off in just three or four minutes so that we can move to 12A. So if you are left on the list, um, if you want to lend your support to someone else's intervention, please just do it by name and not by summary. And, um, and we'll do our best to make sure we have everybody's unique comments taken into account. Thank you. Okay, so just we have four more uh, interventions. Uh, Johanna from GAP, Claire from the UK, Silla from ICCA, we have Colombia, and then we also have Iran. So, Jelana, you have to Thank you very much, Nalini. Um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody, and a happy new year. I'll keep it as short as that. Um, I, I have to say, Clarissa, I would be grateful if you would sum up when everybody has spoken. Uh, I noticed that a number of countries are coming after me, and I think it's important that we hear all views, although I have absolutely um, every sympathy with your concern to take E off the table at this point. I think that uh, GAP would certainly support that. Um, I'm. So I'm sorry if I missed something right at the beginning um, because I was having a little trouble coming uh, joining. Um, the uh, the question of just compiling what everybody has said. Um, I understand that. That's that's. I I wouldn't be in your shoes for all the tea in China, as we say in this country. This is not an easy process to manage. But if we just compile and don't put the thing in pro in 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 its uh, don't put the text that results into its slot in the overall text, I, I'm not sure how much progress we're going to be able to make on these calls. And we all want to make as much progress as possible um, because I think we have to look at 3BIS, not just on its own, but in, in where it comes. I'm assuming, unless I missed something at the beginning of this meeting, that 3A from the original text, which talks about the Secretariat reporting to the International Conference on implementation by all stakeholders, um, and that institutional arrangements will be needed for that, that still applies. So, yes, um, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, yes. Please do, please do clarify. Yeah. Yes, that, we, that we're only talking about the review committee. We've already reviewed paragraph three in our last meeting, or maybe two meetings ago. I am losing track. We're just talking about the periodic review group and whether there is appetite amongst all of you as stakeholders to have a periodic review group, um, uh, a, a periodic review group that would that would supplement or, and again, these are not the co-facilitator's ideas, so I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but that this would be a group that would work with the secretariat to, to and I'll use the word analyze and whether that's the right word or not, uh, the the reporting, et cetera. So this is the, every the secretariat would still do its job. It would, you know, I believe we talked about lot. We did talk last time about what the role of the secretary would be. Right now, we're really just looking at whether we would have a periodic review group that would assist the secretariat in that effort, and whether in D there would be this sort of perhaps review process of of countries or stakeholders. So I think that that I think we've already agreed that, that the secretariat probably yeah. needs to go beyond just compiling. There is an outstanding issue on what verb is used to capitalize on that. And that will be in paragraph three. And so then the question is, what about this periodic review group? Is that something you support? Uh, and what about this country review process? And yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that clarification. 
the the um like the us and the eu and others we would not see any need for a periodic review group if the secretariat does its job properly then that will be analytical uh, it'll have to be if it's summarizing um you know one hopes 193 inputs so it will and and then from all the stakeholders that would be just the countries uh so we would we would very much see uh see the periodic review process as a duplication of what would go on in the meetings. And so some people would be consulted twice and some people would only hear what happened in the meetings. So we don't see any particular reason for that. Um, where uh, in C, we uh, don't really know what these reports are because we talk about one report in 3BIS-B. So, um, uh, perhaps you could, if any of this is being kept, you could perhaps be careful about where it's the report or whatever. Um, we would not support um, obligatory reports of every country th every three or four years. And we're not quite sure where three or four years comes from because we don't really know how often the meetings are going to be at this point. So again, we're somewhat confused. But we would support very strongly um, the idea of voluntary national re re reviews. Um, and that is something that we tried to get into the Commission on Sustainable Development following Rio 92. Now, it didn't fly then, but following um, 2000, 2005, and the idea was never to be judgmental. I remember one delegate just now talking about judgment. The point of a peer review is it's your equals, your peers who review you, who are probably facing the same problems. Um, and indeed, the, the voluntary national reviews that have now grown out, having been rejected 20, 20 plus years ago, 30 years ago, that have now come out of the 2015 SDG process are not only popular, they're oversubscribed. The number of slots that can be managed in the course of the annual work looking at progress on the SDGs is there are more people wanting to, more countries wanting to give voluntary reviews than there are slots for. And people are finding the process incredibly energizing. So we would be very strongly supportive of doing it in this context on the understanding that it's entirely voluntary. And the purpose of it would be not to say we're wonderful, but to say these are the kinds of issues where we are making progress. These are the ones where we're having difficulty. Has anybody got any ideas of what we can do better? And we all learn from that. Thank you. So let's thank you. Claire, there's also a comment from Rory McNeil, but I do have a look. Um, I'll now give the floor to Claire. From the UK. Thank you. Yes, uh, Claire Dixon here from the UK and Happy New Year to all. Um, I just wanted to support the intervention from Japan in that we need to ensure that any discussions on reporting does need to consider the, vir the work from virtual, group, virtual working group one for taking stock of progress and also the indicators and milestones because as this work develops we'll have more information about what will be realistic and achievable for reporting and this will include the timelines that we're discussing and also balancing the need to reduce the burden of reporting but ensuring we can we can measure progress um also want to echo the point on the need for flexibility and the fact that it is voluntary in nature and that countries could then perhaps be encouraged to participate in periodic workshops and networks to discuss and share best practice and opportunities for improvement instead of a formal review process. Thank you. Okay, um, next I have Silla. Yes, um, thank you do. for yeah, thank you for all the efforts. Actually, the UK delegate just summed it all up very nicely. 
We also support Japan's suggestion, um, you know, that online survey based on the, you know, prioritization in the targets and the indicators would really be helpful in our mind and also alleviate some of the work. We also support some of the other comments that have been made on the voluntary nature and the need to make sure that there is enough flexibility that the reporting requirements don't undermine the actual implementation efforts. So there is a need um, to certainly take stock, but it should be made in an easy and voluntary manner to allow um, you know, all the countries to participate as they wish. Thank you. Okay, next on my list, I have Marjorie from Colombia, followed by Seth from Iran, and then we have Olga, and I think that should be our last intervention. We have to move on. We have the floor. Hello, good morning. Um, thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so many thanks indeed for uh, to the co-facilitators and the secretariat for the hard work. If I'm allowed, I only want to make some general remarks regarding the proposed reporting system. Although we recognize the importance of reporting and stocking progress, this is something really key in this process. Colombia would like to express that uh, we consider important to take into account differences in terms of capacities between countries for doing this work. Then for developing countries, new tasks on reporting can bring challenges. So we support what has been said by, by, by Brazil, for example, and others regarding that reporting to be flexible, um, and we adhere that in accordance with national capacities. So, uh, perhaps a more friendly tool, as it has been proposed by Japan, can be considered. In this line, we would like to encourage to bring to this discussion and to this part uh, the necessity to consider uh, supporting to promote capacity building and skills regarding reporting and analyzing data for countries. And maybe we can overcome this kind of challenges in a, in a soon future. Thank you. We have a Said from Iran. We have the floor. Uh, thank you, Nalini, for giving me the floor. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening to all you colleagues. Uh, wish you all a very happy and healthy new year. I'd like to appreciate the co-facilitators uh, for the work they have done. Um, uh, as a, some general uh, point of view, uh, I would like to share uh, some points with you. Um, I would like to emphasize that uh, any agreement on uh, reporting uh, is uh, highly dependent on the progress of the item of uh, other items in other virtual working groups. Also, uh, with regards to the measuring the progress, uh, I think it's imp very important to take into account uh, the national circumstances of each uh, countries uh, because I think. Um, one uh, size fits all does uh, not work. Uh, therefore, it is important to be realistic and flexible and uh, also think of uh, some sort of uh, qualitative uh, reporting format. Uh, another point that I would like to share with you is that uh, I also would like to ask the co-facilitators to keep the Paragraph this three in the, in the brackets. Thank you. Okay, and then finally on my list we have Olga, and then I think we then move forward. So Olga, you have the um, Okay, thank you very much, and um, happy new year to everyone. So, um, I'm talking on behalf of a group of uh, NGOs, and so we believe. Um, 
the review group or uh, a committee uh, should be a multi-stakeholder one to ensure that uh, progress made by different stakeholders is well considered and 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 due to the voluntary nature of the instruments, it is uh, we believe that it is particularly important to have uh, some kind of um, to have some kind of format or a recurrent procedure or a periodic review, review in place to ensure that all stakeholders work uh, for realizing the strategic objectives and their targets and indicators and milestones. And evaluations can also highlight not just needs in terms of technical capacity, but also uh, financial needs in developing countries and countries in transition and can help us allocate limited support resources, both uh, financial and technical, in a timely and efficient way. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we have one more hand up. Carissa, I don't know if you would, uh, it's from Priscilla from Brazil. You're on mute, uh, Carissa. Sorry about that. Um, I hope that uh, has not been disruptive. Um, so uh, I would, I will certainly, of course, turn to turn to that hand. I do want to note that we are already way past our time for this particular issue, um, and we haven't even started twelve. So uh, let's do that quickly, and then I would very much like to move to twelve a to make sure we can can get views reflected. Okay. So Priscilla, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Not just uh, in, indeed, I would like to ask for a clarification about paragraph five before moving to the next item on the agenda, uh, especially about the possibility of creation of a panel or a body of experts to assist the secretariat. Um, I would you like to know if this idea is already encompassed in paragraph three B? Please, Carissa, could you give me some clarification about that? Thank you. Sure. So um, I think when we talked, I also have that question and, and Tirupan and I have discussed it. Um, I think when we talked about it in paragraph five, uh, my recollection, that was the only part of paragraph five that we had had left in paragraph five because the rest was moved to paragraph four, three, one through four. Um, it was my understanding that the difference and again this is just my understanding that the difference was that in five the panel or the group of experts would actually work with the secretariat to compile and analyze consider etc and to produce the report so that that was I you know and I don't I don't want to simplify Nalini in any way what you and your team do but I think the idea would be that the secretariat needs help to do, to to just put everything together in that was the idea in five I don't have all of my notes in front of me but my recollection is that there was not a tremendous amount of support for the idea that the secretariat needed help in those tasks uh, when we discussed it under five three bis on the other hand is a review committee that would then look at that outcome and make some assessments based on, you know, I assume a draft of the report that the secretariat would have put together. Does that, does that help? That's how I've been looking at it, at least how I read the text that came to us. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure, sure. Now I, I got the idea. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much for all of your comments on 3 bis. Um, Tirupan and I appreciate those very much. Um, it does seem that there is, you know, some sort of convalescing around some general ideas, and we will we'll do our best to pull those together for you. Just um, following up a little bit on, I think, what Olga and what our, um, our colleague from Iran mentioned uh, is last time, and again, I can, I believe we discussed this in, in, at the end of December, there was a lot of support for the idea that there needs to be some sort of template or guidance or, you know, Jan, Japan's proposal called for a survey, some sort of common 
but differentiated, just kidding. Um, some sort of common uh, way that information could come together such that some sort of assessment should be made. So Tirupan and I have in our in our compilation of GE and your comments over the last couple of months noted that that is important. We have put a footnote in the text um, as well as the issue in the parking lot about whether that guidance should, you know, how you would like to codify your interest in that guidance. So, all right, um, we are over our time as usual. Um, it's exciting that you're all interested at the same time. Makes me makes me nervous that you won't get to all of your other issues. So I would like to turn to 12A, which is our other outstanding paragraph in G. We're going to be very um, quick on 12A so that I can turn the microphone over to Tiraporn, uh, Tiraporn and we can talk about the SPI and then get back to get back to H. So if you would look at 12A, it is in front of you now on the screen. A does cover a number of issues that we've already discussed. Um, it also has some very big issues in it in terms of, of how looking at, we should be looking at targets and, and the strategic objectives. So um, obviously, again, this is text that came to us um, out of either OEG3 or um, IP3. So um, we don't have a lot of context for the conversations that happen behind it. Um, I guess one thing that I would note is that, you know, there's obviously probably some experience from the Secretariat in terms of of how these things come together and and Nalini, if you have any comments as we go through these, we would of course welcome your views on on these issues. Um, but I'd like to talk about the issues in paragraph 12a in terms of of general concepts. So in 12a, it talks about reporting occurring regularly. I think that that is something that uh, is a is is in the existing psychum text. Um, uh, Nalini actually looked at the text for us uh, over the course of the last couple of days and took note that the actual frequency of reporting is not mentioned in the text, uh, in the existing text. And that is a model that we could think about here um, and as opposed to sort of debating how many, how many years. Uh, there's also the clear point that we have all mentioned over the last couple of months that it is since we don't know how often the international conference is going to meet, but that is not yet decided that perhaps it's difficult to talk about how frequently the reporting should be. Although I know there are some views on, on, on that relationship and perhaps that might be something you would want to raise in your intervention. You know, if you wanted it every other ICCM or international meeting of the international conference, for example, that could be just you know, a, you know, an, every other meeting would, would also be a reporting period. That, that would be something that we could talk about. I do believe we've already agreed that frequent, that, that reporting should uh, occur regularly. So I don't think we need to talk so much about that. Um, we want to make sure that there, it does happen at a frequency such that reports can be delivered uh, to the international conference. We have already talked about those reports needing to be able to be used to uh, sort of assess progress and overall programmatic performance, programmatic performance. So again, I think the only thing that's maybe new in A would be to sort of facilitate the words facilitate trend identification. Although I do believe in our other conversations on G that we have already covered that concept. So I'm hopeful that you will all generally agree that A is already covered in our earlier discussions. And of course, you will you will want to see that um, when we look at G as a whole over the next couple of weeks. So I, I don't think we need to spend intervention time on that. On little b, um, I think that, we, again, we've already discussed the importance of making sure that progress against targets should be measured, that there should be a report to the international conference on that. Um, I don't, I think the activity of staffing and budget of the secretary is probably does not belong here. Um, and so what will be outstanding in little one is, are you measuring progress against, t, you know, key targets, you know, in a certain number of years? Again, that's probably also being discussed in the, in working group one. 
So I would, I think our, our suggestion would be that we, that we sort of hold on that idea until they decide what they come out with in virtual working group number one. The interesting concept that comes out in one is, is it key targets or all targets? And again, I think that that is something that we would recommend is deferred to virtual working group one. And perhaps we come back to that, you know, at the very, very end of the virtual working group process and see if there's an opportunity to, to consolidate those ideas. Little two is very similar. Um, again, I think we've already talked about identifying gaps and that the report to the international conference would be designed to, to identify gaps as well as I believe the Swiss um, intervention from last time about shortcomings as well as things that are going well. So I don't think there's anything new in two. And in little three, I think the new idea is, you know, all strategic objectives being reviewed on a rotational basis. So again, that I wonder if that's coming up in virtual working group one, and if it is, is that something that we would defer? So I would ask you to focus your interventions on 12A, on things that you think are important to be discussed in section G that we have not already covered in other meetings and sort of seek your general assessment that much of the, the specific Six of little one, two, and three that are not duplicative of what we've already talked about might very well belong in, in virtual working group one. So with that, um, I would like to just check my notes and see if there's anything else that we talked about. Um, I think that's it. So Nalini, could we open the floor for some sort of general quick comments? And we're, we're looking at a very short amount of time. So please, please be very quick. Thank you. Okay, and then perhaps, uh, Carissa, just to add to what uh, you said that it was ICCM4 in 2015 that requested the Secretariat to develop the third progress report, uh, which includes the achievements, trends, weaknesses on SICAM for the period 2014 to 16, um, and an analysis of the 20 indicators of progress for consideration by the open ended group, and then requested the open ended working group then to. Uh, review that and then to see what uh, report is required then for ICCM5. Um, just based on, you know, our requests for uh, reporting, this last round of reporting to develop the report for ICCM5, we received a total of 50 plus uh, submissions. So, uh, but that did take a lot of time and effort, uh, reminders, a little bit more, you know, uh, prodding as well. So um, I, I feel that at least from the secretariat point of view, if there is some kind of uh, template or online survey type of uh, mechanism uh, that may might definitely help to facilitate um, the the reporting uh, and and you know we could do some capacity building around it as well. So uh, I will now give the floor to from Gap. Thank you very much, uh, Nalini, and thank you for that last bit of uh, information, which was very useful. Carissa, if I'm not putting words into your mouth, I think what you're asking us to do is to say whether we think we need this paragraph at all. And Gap's answer would be no. Um, first of all, it's a very odd paragraph to have as number 12, because it uh, the part A, the, the chapeau, um, says some some important things, and if we haven't said them before 12, we will have forgotten what we're trying to do. And since you won't want to hear from me much today, I will now say something a bit revolutionary. Um, and that is that if you look overall at the whole reporting section, indeed quite a lot of this governance section, and you look at what was in SICAM 1, the text we did in Dubai, the text we did in Dubai was structured in a different way because it talked about the mechanisms, it took implementation as part of the mechanisms, it took it in the context of, of the SICAM process, if you like, as much as, as what was to be done on the ground. But it was an awful lot clearer to read. And I am wondering, given that we're very unlikely to have a face-to-face -face IP4, and we may have an end at the end, we may have a very short time 
in the in the meeting face to face in Bonn, whether this group shouldn't have courage and give you and your and Tirapon a mandate to almost go back and see what we actually have to change. And one of the things from my perspective, from GAP's perspective, would be to write in um, the possibility of voluntary national reviews for those countries who want them. Um, but there's, and, and of course, to stress, as Olga and others did, the multi-stakeholder uh, multi process. But there wasn't an awful lot wrong with this section. So why are we reinventing the wheel in a time where we have very little time to do it? This is not in any way to denigrate all the work that your, the co-chairs have put in and everybody has put in through the voluntary working group. But if we find at the end of that process that it wasn't broke, then don't let's fix it. Thank you. So um, right now, no requests for the floor. We have um, Andrew Clark from the US. Andrew, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Nalini. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I certainly agree with, with several of the things that were just said that maybe we should look and, and see if this paragraph is, uh, is necessary. Um, we, you know, the, the language in the chapeau is generally okay to us, um, although, you know, as, as I know that it might be redundant and, and unnecessary because a lot of this, this material is covered er elsewhere. Um, and, and on the question about the frequency of the reporting, I, I don't think that we have anything firm to say on that yet, just to note, um, as, uh, as Chris had did, that, you know, we would want to take a close look at that. Um, in relation to how frequently other meetings would be. So we would, but uh, as those issues are not settled, we don't really have a firm view on how, how frequent the reporting should be yet. Um, so on on subparagraphs one to three, um, I, I think that uh, it's a little bit uh, confusing. And then I also you know, note that a lot of these issues maybe are best addressed by the by virtual working group uh, one. But this this idea that's kind of introduced through sub paragraphs one and and two here about there being like targets against key targets and potentially different reporting cycles for those that that is um, rather confusing for us. It's not clear what would be you know considered a target or a key target, and having you know separate reporting cycles sounds like it could be something that would be potentially very confusing and something that would be. Um, you know, maybe lead to kind of constant reporting um, cycles, um, you know, which which is something that we've you know noted before as as something we would want to to avoid having reporting be overly burdensome. So I I think I would concur that maybe this paragraph would not be necessary, and any issues that are useful for reporting um, should be handled in other parts of the text. Um, and also I I think that GAP makes a very good that. We should not necessarily um, work too hard to reinvent the parts that were working from the, the previous text, and that very much includes uh, reporting language. So um, I think that that perhaps we should um, try to make this simplify this and streamline this a bit, um, including potentially removing this uh, this subparagraph uh, 12a. Thank you. We have a few uh, comments from UNEP in the chat box. So perhaps Jacqueline, if you'd like to take the floor. Maybe just uh, before we give her the floor, I mean, I think we have sort of, I, I appreciate the referring to her former interventions. And of course, we, we've we already, I think, agreed on the need to assess, evaluate and, and move forward. So Jacqueline, I think that's already sort of covered in the, in the previous uh, efforts that we've done, and uh, I think we can certainly look at uh, at the at the previous psychom text, and and if you all are willing to to let us have some flexibility to do that, I think 
we we would welcome that. We are obviously again working with 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 what we were given, and uh, there's no question that that there is a lot of redundancy, and we would be we would be happy to do that. So, Jacqueline, I I think everyone agrees with what is in the text box for you. If you would absolutely, you know, we would like to certainly give you the floor if you have anything you'd like to add. So, please, uh, Jacqueline, the floor is open to you. No, thank you. And I don't want to take time. I know and I'm conscious that we are get, we are running out of it. But my point is, is that uh, any process needs to assess or see not only against targets and milestones or objectives, but to the vision of, of the instrument, which is the thought management. And that is not captured here. So I guess that's the intention, but it's missing. It's not written. So um, uh, we also support in a way that the, the chapeau can be written in a, in a different manner to cover all those elements. And maybe little Roman A, two and three are part of what uh, comes afterwards, uh, because that can be this moving targets or the, uh, some uh, in some period key targets might need to be assessed because you are getting into the deadline uh, in some others the, the objectives because of something else so uh, it, getting into two prescriptive things might not be the best that, that was my point and sorry for taking the floor i didn't mean to but thank you for giving me the opportunity <laughs> Okay, and then we have a comment in the chat box from Suki from Japan about the reporting template. So that's uh, something that's been mentioned. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So I think that that will um, conclude our discussion of Section G. Uh, thank you again for for all of your comments. I think we got a lot of good. I think I am I'm sure to your point as well have a good sense of where your priorities are and what you would like to see and we will do our best to put those together and come back with a with a with a section G that uh, takes everything into account in, including uh, perhaps a back look at, um, at where we are in the existing text which um, obviously I I'm, I'm not sure where how this all started uh, and whether that was deemed uh, not sufficient at the time, but we will go back and take a look. We will put that in the context of what you've told us about Section G and see what we can do to simplify, clarify, and uh, and do our best to identify any outstanding issues that need further discussion. Uh, to your point with that, I would love to turn it over to you and to and to talk about the SPI and uh, looks like we may need to arrange a little bit, rearrange a little bit our schedules from hopefully just 10 to 10, 20, but we will we will do our best. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, and over to you, Tirupa. Thank you, Carissa. Um, now I turn your attention to the side policy interface. Uh, I would like to summarize based on our discussion to paid on November 19, 2020, and the electronic input we received, we have three different views regarding the side policy interface. First, some stakeholders prefer to have an overall side policy interface for the chemicals and waste cluster. Second, some others like to have a side policy interface within the context of the Beyond 2020 instrument. And third, the late lies to discuss it when all stakeholders had the same page of understanding about existing gaps and challenges related to the scientific uh, community on the chemicals and waste. As your co-facilitator, Kalisa, and I would like to ensure that our voices are heard and that at the end of this phase of our virtual work, the virtual working group has collective advanced the ding ding, and to that end, we would like that the group may wish to consider whether it might be able to. Uh, Mariana, could you please turn to the next slide, please? Uh, yes. May the, the group may wish to consider whether it might be able to confirm a level of comfort within the 
virtual working group on the need for some form of a side policy interface. Second, confirm the view expressed by members of the group that the intersectional process does not have the mandate to establish a side policy interface for the overall chemical and waste cluster. And we, we would like you to consider establish a short but not exhaustive list of priorities or functions for any form of a side policy interface. And consider to establish a list of characteristics that our group would want any side policy interface to have. I will park it here and open the discussion on the four bullet points for 10 minutes and we will move to the another point of, of, of the list that I prepare. I, I am currently sub prepared. Now I would like to open the floor for this particular uh for these four particular bullet point to make you thinking. Um, so just for, from Secretary's uh, um, point of view that we had submitted this document, it's a two-page document. Um, it was circulated yesterday by email, and it's also available on the website uh, under the virtual working group uh, to dedicated page. So we have first um, uh, Felix from Switzerland, followed by Jelhana from Ga. Felix, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and thank you very much also for the introduction and for the coaches and the secretary for providing the paper. I think it's a very helpful paper and really a good resume of discussion so far. I have on those four points no comment, but I have a few other comments or documents. Is it right to present them now or will we go through the documents later? I, I think the better is can you can do it later because I will walk you through all of the uh, Point that we, we have on the papers. Okay, thank you. Then I will come back later to that. Thank you. Thank you. Julie, you have the floor. Thank you very much. And I'd like very much to echo Switzerland's um, uh, comments on the paper. I found it really helpful. Um, GAP would very much have a level of comfort on the need for some form of a science policy interface. So the answer to the first question for us is yes. We would particularly like to uh, for that science policy interface to concentrate on um, health and hu human health and um, the effects of, of chemicals and wastes and on the environmental effects. Uh, we think that those are very good metrics for knowing whether we are making progress or not. Um, while uh, we probably would agree that the virtual working group, well, that the intersessional process does not have a mandate to establish an S SPI, uh, we were quite interested as to why that question was posed in terms of the intersessional process. We would suggest that probably not even the, inter, the, the ICCM itself has a mandate to do that because it would need to be housed somewhere um, and, it, and the ICCM doesn't necessarily have the kind of broad governance possibilities that um, that some existing UN bodies do, for example. It's not it's not quite in the same league, um, though it's multi-stakeholder nature and so on are, are a very good thing. So we would say that a, a request, well, a, a decision to establish an SPI would probably have to be taken very, very high up in the overall multilateral system. Um, we believe that the intergovernmental process could be something where that demand should start. So it doesn't have a mandate to establish it, but we don't think there's anything to stop the IP from asking for it. 
Um, the list of priorities that you've given are a good short list to start with, as are the characteristics. So I won't add anything on those last two questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next on my list is Suzanne, followed by Valentina from here. Suzanne, you have the floor. Um, Canada believes that having science policy dialogue and having a science policy function at some level is important. I think the challenge we're all facing is that we're not 100% agreed or clear on whether or not where this would reside, how it would function, and how to support for um, the Beyond 2020 framework. Um, certainly, irrespective of or maybe in addition to how and when a broader policy science policy function, um, or body could be established we will want to think um, as we're looking at the types of functions and priorities and the mandates um, of what would be needed to support the beyond 2020 framework in and of itself there may be certain broad um, uh, functions that were proposed in some of the papers from example, the compilation from the Secretariat that are very high level, but there's much more granular science policy issues of concern, for example. And so we'll want to consider how to best place our resources and make the best use of uh, the knowledge or our The IP uh, doesn't necessarily have a mandate to establish an SPI uh, that's broad to this cluster. Um, if there is that desire to have a further conversation, we'd be open to like having further conversations on that. But I think we should also not try to spend all of our energy on perfection of hopes that there might be somebody that that will eventually solve everyone's problems per se, um, but what is it truly that we would need in terms of supporting um, as well the Beyond 2020 frame? Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Now we have next uh, Valentina, followed by Claire Dixon from the UK, and then Caroline Vickers. Valentina, Thank you have the floor. Hello, dear colleagues. Thank you, Nalini, for giving me the floor. Uh, I would like to start uh, th thanking co-facilitators for this document, uh, Reflections on Science Policy Interface. It was indeed very useful for us. Um, we have we have a preference. We, we, we would like to first confirm um, the, the, the comfort and the support uh, to establish a science policy interface or platform. Uh, we have our preference on an independent and inter intergovernmental platform uh, for the chemicals and waste cluster. Uh, and, and we would like to see it, uh, the structure reflected as IPCC or IPES models. But then we could uh, further go deeper with, with all the characteristics uh, and, the, and the elements we would like to, to see in this SPI. But we, we would also like to to, to echo what was said before and, and to take advantage of, of this moment and this group that we have, uh, at least to explore uh, the list of priorities uh, and functions and also what the needs of SICOM are and of ICCM. So we welcome uh, these ideas and we were happy to, to give further comments on, on a later stage. Thank you. Yeah, next on my list, uh, Claire Dixon from the UK. Claire, you have the floor. Yes, thank you again. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for the compilation document. It was very useful. Um, so just kind of working through these points then, um, confirm a level of comfort um, with the needs. I think we, as the UK, think it is essential to strengthen the science policy interface for chemicals and waste and to enhance the collaboration and strengthen the evidence base of scientists and decision makers because we really need to start thinking about matching our ambitions for a transformative impact. Um, the second point then, I think 
yeah, we do agree that the intersessional process doesn't necessarily have the mandate to establish an SPI for the overall chemicals and waste cluster. But we do believe that we do, with our community here, have a mandate to support and shape the activities that have been initiated under the UNEA process on strengthening the science policy interface. Um, in terms of the priorities and the characteristics, I do agree that the list that has been provided is a really good start. But just to add on the um, list of priorities, we want to make sure that we are um, going to be solution focused and that we'll, um, some of the assessments will refine potential solutions and response options as well. Um, and then on the list of characteristics as well, although it, it is listed there, I just wanted to go into a bit more detail about why some of the characteristics. And I think um, we're looking to achieve the global authority that platforms like the IPCC and ITBES have, but we do recognise that our community is, is much smaller and therefore we're looking for a, a, a streamlined version and we need to be more flexible to ensure it's relevant for the community and its stakeholders here. So essentially learning from the experience of others whilst adapting to our unique challenges. Um, in terms of um, it being independent, I think this would allow it to become an overarching authoritative science voice um, because it would be uniquely positioned to tackle the cross-cutting issues that we don't currently have. Um, it would allow us to kind of maximise the resource as well and linkages to other science policy interface groups as well. So it would prevent uh, duplication of resources there. Um, we want to make sure that with flexibility, this allows it to be a demand driven um, platform. We need to make sure this is uh, responding to the needs and, and that the, the assessments that are produced are being utilised. Um, and with credibility and authority, I think this is really the best way to attract the, the talent that is needed from the scientific community to be involved in these groups. The evaluation of SICAM um, previously showed that academia had not been sufficiently engaged and they did not, we did not have sufficient su science support. So our academics uh, are telling us that we have to have a world-class scientific advice and policy relevant evidence. We do a body that is independent, credible and authoritative to attract this type of, uh, of participation. Um, so it's possible that the group can be independent, but still highly responsive to the needs of the Beyond 2020 framework and while supporting the, the whole chemicals and waste cluster. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, next on my list, I have Caroline Vickers from WHO, followed by uh, Andrew Clark from US and then Tom Burton. Caroline, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nalini. We'd like to raise an issue of scope um, in relation to an SPI for the chemicals and waste cluster. We understand this chemicals and waste cluster refers to UNEP instruments, and we would recognise that the most appropriate place for that to be discussed would obviously be UNEA. If there is potential interest in an SPI to be used more broadly by other inter intergovernmental organisations, then of course that could be subsequently raised by member states in those relevant governing bodies. Because it would need to be discussed in the World Health Assembly and without a consensus of our member states on the issue at the moment, we aren't able to support in this forum the concept of a broader SPI involving health. We believe that the functions and characteristics discussion would therefore most usefully in this forum relate to what we need for the Beyond 2020 discussion, for the Beyond 2020 instrument, because it's an issue for uh, those other bodies whether or not an SPI would be useful for them, and they may have different and additional ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Um, Andrew, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Nalini, and um, thanks to the, the co-conveners for producing uh, this paper and, and um, taking down all the views that have been expressed on this, uh, this complicated issue. I'm um, kind of focusing narrowly on, the, on the, these four points before us. Um, I, I think that we do agree on the um, need for, for us to discuss um, a science policy. Um, interface here and that there is a need for something. I think that the, the 
questions of scope and where the sits are very important um, as, as noted before. So kind of this leading into the second bullet, we do agree that the, this, um, the ICCM does not have the, um, does not have the mandate or the authority to establish a, an SPI for the water chemicals and waste cluster. Um, so we would want to make sure that, that whatever the ICCM, if the ICCM is, uh, could establish something that is specific to the beyond 2020 instrument. So um, I think that we could, you know, that is really, um, you know, where, you know, this body would, would have the, you know, make sense for this body to focus. And we have some ideas in, in that regard that we've shared previously. Um, as far as the um, establishment of, of a list of priorities or characteristics, we would want the um, SPI to have. I think that, you know, that is something also that the um, ICCM could address, but if we're looking at this also also depends on on you know what we're talking about in terms of the scope of of this um, this SPI. I mean, if we're looking at something beyond um, you know outside of the ICCM that is broader, then you know that would be something that maybe would not really be appropriate for the text of the instrument, but maybe it would be something that the um, that the ICCM could still, of course, discuss and and um, you know, come up with with any priorities or characteristics they would like to see, but it would not be something necessarily um, appropriate for the text of this instrument, which should focus really on, um, you know, any kind of uh, should focus on the implementation of this instrument itself rather than um, broader issues. So, um, just generally speaking, I think that um, you know we're we would like to say that we're especially with the first two points that we we confirm those views. And uh, look forward to you know coming in with more substantive thoughts on the SBI uh, when we get to that part of the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Tom Walton. Tom, you have the floor. Um, hello and happy New Year to everybody. Uh, so, what I should say? So, I'm I'm speaking from the Royal Society of Chemistry. Um, and I should say my day job is Professor of Sustainable Chemistry at Imperial College. But although I'm speaking on behalf of the Royal Society of Chemistry, I think I should make it very clear that our position has been arrived at in discussion with chemical societies from across the world. And um, that leads me to um, a word that I will repeat several times, I'm sure, um, which is global. And so, first of all, um, quickly to confirm level of cup, yes, I think um, all of our discussions, um, both today and in previous meeting, have shown that some form of an SPI um, is required. Um, as to uh, whether you know we are in a position to be able to establish that or not, I think you know we are in a position to recommend to whichever body is in a position to establish that that um, such an SPI should be established. And I think we, you know, absolutely we can agree to make that recommendation. And I leave it to the professionals to determine which particular body is the right one to make that request of. Um, then um, in terms of um, priorities and functions, I think, uh, as everybody said, the list is a good starting place. I think one of the things that is important to note, though, is that a, you know, a truly independent SPI will have as part of its function establishing priorities for itself. And so um, any expression of that should not be excluding uh, that possibility. I liked the words that I heard before which were independent, credi credible and authoritative, because in order to get the highest quality scientific advice, then it needs to be that. And in order to be listened to by policymakers, it needs to be that. So I think those are really helpful wor words. But I want to also come back to that, that word that I said, I would global. So whilst it is true, that um, different chemicals are produced in specific places, they are traded globally. And so chemicals are used globally. It is also true when looking at chemicals in the environment that they move globally beyond our control, whether that is 
um, you know, highly fluorinated chemicals that have been found in Arctic ice or plastics that have been found on beaches on islands in the middle of the Pacific. These things move globally and so are a global concern. Also, I mean global in the other sense of the word, in that you know, the system at the moment is very much um, based around particular groups of chemicals, particular impacts that those chemicals might have. And one of the things that will be very important for this SPI is to prioritize, is to point towards particular, you know, particular things being of more or less uh, relevance for immediate action than others. And it's very difficult to do that if everybody is sitting in their own little pocket and you know, speaking for them, so, you know, I work. I work on chemicals that are used for solvents. Of course, I think they're the most important thing because I work on it. But that does not mean that they necessarily are globally considered to be the most important. So it needs to be global in that sense. It needs to look across the whole of the chemical space, and particularly when it comes to horizon scanning, you can't do that from inside something which has a very specific remit. You have to be global in that sense of, um, of, of, the, of the word as well. So global, independent, credible, authoritative, that is what this SPI has to look like. Thank you. Thank you very much. LED, do, do we have any request for the board? So I had, I think Jill is asking for the floor in the chat box. So let me just unmute and then see. Jill, I have the floor. Oh, sorry. No, I'm not. Beg your oh, pardon. Okay. That was it. <laughs> yeah. You, okay, you put a, a note in, in, in the chat. No, I, I was trying to make a longer note. I do beg your pardon. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, then we have next uh, Said from Iran. Said, do you have the floor? Uh, thank you, Nalini, for giving me the floor. Uh, I'd like to thank the co-facilitators for preparing their reflections on a science uh, policy interfa interface. Um, it's unfortunate to say that uh, uh, I have received the, uh, the document last night, so I didn't have uh, didn't find enough time to. Uh, consult my uh, colleagues and to receive any feedback from them uh, because uh, you know here in Iran the uh, work week is from Saturday to Thursday so I hope uh, we will be able to send our uh, views uh, through electronic input thank you thank you we will maybe open the next round for that later okay uh, I think we support to close for this uh, particular point that that I I open for the discussion. There seem be generally agreement that the establishing and overarching side policy interface for the chemical and waste cluster is beyond the scope of the mandate of the IP and. A number of submission and earlier view expressed today then suggest that. The, our group could, as a next step, elaborate the needs, the needs of the SICOM stakeholder for such an overall mechanism to be established or what any uh, function of site policy in, interface would be. And this could, however, also be the possible next step for those who are interested in assessing the needs for a side policy interface within the context of the beyond 2020 uh, instrument. So we as your co-facilitator, Carissa and I would like to seek the view of the group as to whether an elaboration on the needs for any form of side policy interface as well as on its possible function at uh, non general levels regardless is placement might be possible deliberations for the mandates of this virtual working group. Uh, a number of relational were present from, from, from the submission and from the uh, discussion earlier and also from the discussion on the November 19. 
for supporting a site policy interface either as an overall mechanism for a chemical and waste cluster or, or for the uh, other instrument for the sound management uh, for the beyond 2020 instrument as shown on the slide number seven but but I, I I will not read them all, but I would like to you to uh, see this is the list of national for that need for the site policy interface, uh, whatever form it could be. And then among other suggestions, several will support consideration of the bullet show on the slide number eight and nine. Um, Malena, could you please go to slide number eight and then slightly go to number nine? This sum of which could be appropriate for either instrument bed. I mean, the, the, the side policy insert for, for the uh, beyond 2020 instrument or an overall side policy interface for the uh, cluster of chemicals and waste. And I will stop here and open the floor for more discussion on the needs or rationales of any side policy interface for such, uh, such uh, five minutes from now. I, I see hand from the Switzerland. Nalini, could you unmute him? Yeah. Um, so just before I give the floor to uh, Felix from Switzerland, uh, Mr. Mohamed Kwaja had asked for the floor earlier, but I'd missed it. It was in the chat box and he doesn't have oh, the function. Yeah. So I'm just going to perhaps give the floor to first to Mr. Kwaja and then followed by Felix. All right. Yeah, thank, thanks very much. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry for the lack of facility uh, on my computer. Uh, I wish to share comments uh, on uh, bullet one and bullet two in the previous slide, uh, which is now removed. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 we, we, we read it like this, that uh, on one hand, um, there is a there is a consensus for the for the need uh, of an SPI, and we also fully support it because the uh, science-based evidence are more practical and more feasible to practice. Uh, but then uh, uh, we also are uh, saying that uh, the, the 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 IP does not have the mandate. So if the IP does not have the mandate mandate, uh, even uh, uh, even if we if, if we enhance. Uh, if we even if we enhance the need for it, uh, are we expecting the revision of the mandate or, or enhancing the scope of the mandate so that this could be included? Because I don't see the two matching bullet one and bullet two. I hope I clarify myself. Thank you. Thank you. Felix, you have the floor now. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm very happy to hear that we have that everybody's supporting that we need um, some form of SP. I think that's a great starting point. I have one comment on the point the number of rationals represented for supporting an SPI. I think perhaps one point that it could be more specific what is written now is that the, um, uh, the rational would be provide scientific, scientific or evidence-based analysis for policymakers. I think it's very key the policymaker, the role of policymakers. However, I think also it could be policymakers and other decision makers. I think scientific findings can also be helpful for private sectors, for leaders in industry and the NGOs and so on. I think also there, one key element that I've heard quite often was that we don't want to duplicate work that's already done, but we want to create an added value. Perhaps that's also kind of the rationale behind. Then a few points also on what you have presented on the slides and what these uh, suggestions um, uh, came up. I think one question you have raised is um, that the SPI or SPP could either be an overall mechanism for the chemical and waste cluster or something under ICCN. In our view, key is that it's an intergovernmental mechanism. And that would, by definition, our understanding mean an overall mechanism for the chemical and waste cluster. In our view, this is the most credible, robust, effective, and durable solution. Governments would be able to put to scientists the question for assessment and get policy relevant, but not policy prescriptive independent expertise. I think it's also great to hear from the Royal Chemistry Society, their support for this. I think that was really great to hear also the expertise from academia coming in here. 
And the governance structure would maximize ownership by policymakers to embed scientific findings in the decision making. As mentioned before, they would not only be relevant for policymakers, but also, as we can see from reports for IPBS or IPCC, for others. I think they have even now an impact on business models from the private sector. I think also one point we have discussed quite a lot. I think it's also in the government structure would allow to safeguard against conflict of interest. Here we have some good experiences also from other intergovernment bodies that they can use and build up. And I think most important for us is we want to achieve substantive progress and therefore need a strong science policy platform. And in the intergovernmental science policy platform would have the highest standing and would be able to play in the same league as IPCC or IPPS. We also have seen a new strategy, midterm strategy from UNEP, where they define three action areas, climate, biodiversity, pollution, and chemicals. But there you can see you have climate IPCC, you have for biodiversity IPBS, but at this stage we have nothing for the chemicals and waste sector, and we think we need also something to be on the same level. I think one point also is if we can really achieve something, that this will raise resources on the one hand for sure from governments, but also we can see in other institutions if something is seen as meaningful and as prestigious, then also other actors, in particular academia, are ready to provide in kind contributions, for example, that they enable, allow the scientists to work for assessments and so on. And I think also one element advantage if we can serve the whole Kings and Waste cluster, that would mean, for example, that ICCM could forward questions to such an SPP, and their intergovernment body would then collect those questions, decide, address them, and work. So this would also be allowed to help um, ICCM to, to, to move on with their reflection. And perhaps just taking on two points from my previous speaker, so Suzanne from Canada, I think I fully agree with what you have said, that we have to well reflect the needs and functions. And what we have here at ICCM, because you asked with the question, if I understood it right, if we don't establish this time as such a panel, do we know when it would be established? And I think we have here now a unique chance, really great momentum. If our multi-stakeholder process is sending a signal, what, what do we need? What kind of functions do we need? And that we think that we should have a governmental science policy panel that would be a strong signal for UNEA and WHA to take such elements up and further work on it. Perhaps also a good point made by Caroline from uh, WHO. I think what we have is right if such a science policy panel would be adopted under ICCM. This time, we would not know how this would then relate to WHO, WHA. So I think that was a good point that you made that it's helpful if we have a more general um, outline resolution that would then invite WHA and UNIA to take further steps that might also disregard be very helpful. Um, and just last point, the key function I think is outlined in the paper. I think that's really important that we have the need for horizon scanning and early warning, scientific assessments, and then also this need for enhanced visibility, awareness and communication. Sorry, I was a bit long, but I'm very passionate about this topic, and I think we have a huge chance here, so I took the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Malini, could you please unmute the next speaker, please? Sure, absolutely. So Martha from Norway, followed by Vestilius. Martha, you have the floor. Thank you and hello again. And uh, this might have been more fitting in previous uh, sections, but um, uh, we just wanted to echo uh, the comments just made by Switzerland. And we wanted to say that in our view, we should not commit to a process under the Beyond 2020 framework that limits the opportunities for a broad science policy platform in the chemicals and waste area established by UNEA. And we would therefore support a resolution at ICCM5 that specifies the, need that apply, the needs that apply to the science policy interface without defining a specific form of this platform yet. And important functions of a science policy platform could be, in our view, horizon scanning, early warning analysis, and short-term specific assessments upon requests from policymakers. However, uh, we must keep in mind the cost effectiveness cost effectiveness of such a, a body. Thank you. Thank you.
Vasilis, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, co-facilitators, uh, for the paper. Uh, with the reflection, this uh, is indeed uh, very, very useful. And uh, I'm sorry to uh, first come back to uh, the previous uh, slide with the bullet points. I did not intervene because uh, we have already shared our views in, in this forum and they are published. And I, I feel that uh, uh, the bullet points uh, you have uh, included there the first, uh, the third and the fourth one are already captured uh, in uh, what has been communicated by the EU and the member states. What uh, was a rather new question uh, that you raised uh, was the question on uh, the mandate uh, for establishing um, uh, such uh, an interface uh, at the level of intercessional process uh, or ICCM5. And uh, as uh, it was uh, pointed out uh, by GAP, uh, it, it, it is um, uh, nothing would hinder us uh, to uh, ask or call uh, for uh, such an interface, uh, even if we don't have the mandate, strictly speaking, uh, for a broad uh, or overarching um, um, policy interface. So uh, I, I think, or we think that uh, this would be very important. And uh, allow me to uh, flag that I see in parallel some very good comments uh, in this uh, uh, area of our discussion in the chat box, uh, following on uh, the comment uh, from WHO uh, on the means of, of how to uh, address uh, uh, this uh, um, at, the, at a higher uh, level and uh, what um, is on the chat box uh, from uh, GAP uh, on, on this uh, is something uh, that we find very important. Um, also, allow me to echo what has been uh, suggested uh, and uh, described by uh, my um, Swiss colleague, Felix. Um, uh, it is important, uh, and now I'm coming also to the slides you're now um, having on discussion, um, to address not only uh, policy makers, uh, governments, uh, but also uh, decision makers. Uh, it is important, um, anyhow, uh, that uh, we keep them in mind uh, that uh, what science suggests uh, is serves uh, not only governments, uh, but of course, uh, all involved stakeholders, and this also in conjunction. Uh, with the strategic objectives and targets um, that are um, or should be um, uh, worked out. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it's just a technical note. I hear some shuffling in the background, which uh, is a little disturbing. I'm sorry if I am somehow distracted, but I have to observe this. Uh, someone's big is in the hearing uh, at least in the virtual space so perhaps you can uh, look at it um, thank you just Vasilis, if i can interrupt you for just a second uh we don't hear that on our side you're very clear at least at least on my, okay. on my mic. <laughs> okay. so, hopefully it's just you but i'm not sure i just want to let you know you're you're very clear at least from my perspective okay that's very good to know carissa and uh, that's uh, uh, almost as important, but um, anyway, thank you for this. It's good to know. Um, so, uh, concluding, um, yes, uh, we think uh, that um, you have captured uh, very well the points. We have a high level of comfort for a science policy interface, um, which is uh, not limited uh, to the work of SAIKM. And we do think that uh, the ICCM um, has uh, the means uh, to 
uh, to make a call or ask for this, uh, invitating others at a higher or at the highest uh, possible um, uh, level, international level. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, uh, we, um, Caroline Vickers has to leave. Uh, so just in case there's any questions, we will send them to her um, separately after the call. So Andrew, uh, you have the floor next. Yes, thank you, Nalini. And I, um, I, I do re recognize that we're over time now, so I will try to be very um, brief. And just to say that uh, we do um, support a, uh, you know, a science policy interface, and we think that the the instrument should establish one in the text uh, for the use of this instrument uh, to support countries seeking scientific information to help inform their national efforts on chemicals management, um, as described in our previous submissions. Um, and uh, as we described in those submissions, we think that this would be um, could be best accomplished as a, a network of experts, and we think that this um, network could have it, we, we do not see it as, as having a, a necessary to have a governing me mechanism with additional layers of bureaucracy, but it would provide um, necessary ad hoc support to countries seeking efficient ways to um, share scientific knowledge and, and use that knowledge in their policy development. Um, we would want this network to be nimble enough to reflect uh, the evolution of chemicals uh, and throughout their life cycle. And this network should help uh, with information that would benefit a wide group of stakeholders and not be uh, it's a place for particular governments to to explore country specific issues outside of the development of the sound chemicals and management regimes. Um, the network should also not compete with the work um, or other mandates and or activities of other covered in other fora. Um, and, and we think that, you know, questions of, of something that would be, um, you know, as noted that something that would cover um, the science chemicals and waste. Uh, um, cluster or other institutions more broadly uh, really is beyond the scope of um, of the ICCM. So we would we would really uh, think that our our um, the best effort our best effort should be focused on um, working on what we would want to establish within this instrument um, for the mandate of this uh, virtual working group and the intersectional process more broadly. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next to have Valentina from Uruguay, followed by Olga. Thank you, Nalini, for giving the floor again. Uh, we just want to, to, to emphasize and to highlight some, some elements of what you present on, on your reflections document. Uh, for us, it's, it's very important to have a, a scientific and, and evidence-based analysis uh, for policy making. Uh, also, we as, as developing countries, we consider uh, very important to have this kind of, of evidence because an analysis, because most of the time we don't have the means uh, to develop ourselves those kinds of, of assessments. And, and it's, it's, it's really needed. And, and indeed, we are uh, at this time with the COVID crisis, our government is, is addressing the crisis. I, I was able to contain uh, the, the first, uh, the, let's say, the, the first COVID, um, the first months. Um, we, we contain it successfully, and it was because we follow the evidence and scientific-based uh, analysis and, and, and suggestions that the WHO made. So, also, it's, it's important for the chemical cluster to have uh, to have something, to have a, a platform or, or an interface that could help us on, on that matter and with our policy making developing. Uh, also, we are as government, we are strengthen, strengthening the use of science um, in policy making at all levels, and it was I saw it was also reflected on your on your document. So we thank you for that. Also, we think it is important to take advantage of the existing information that we have, the existing knowledge and the existing experience. We have to take advantage on that and include it on this uh, on this new SPI. 
Uh, and well, of course, I understand that we don't have the mandate to develop a, a, an SPI here uh, at ICCM5, but we will be happy to support uh, a resolution at ICCM5. Uh, and at least we could uh, identify the needs and what uh, ICCM will need and, and what it would request to this new SPI or, or SPP. Uh, and finally, we also would like to give the, the example of IPCC on the climate change uh, cluster because we saw how the visibility was enhanced and, and how it raised awareness. And when IPCC starts uh, communicating better their assessments, they have really good results. And we really we saw a change uh, on the climate, uh, climate, change, uh, climate change cluster, and we would like to see the same on the chemicals and waste cluster. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, you have the floor next. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, so a group of NGO would like to thank the Secretariat for this paper that reflects uh, the opinions from different stakeholder groups and the organizations. Uh, we believe that uh, a dialogue between scientists and all SACOM stakeholders should be encouraged to ensure that data and information generated by non-governmental organizations and community groups, so-called uh, citizen science, is considered. We also believe that uh, gender disaggregated data and better consideration of gender dependent hazards in the work on chemicals and waste should be among key focus of the science policy interface that should help improve how protective and preventive measures are designed and implemented. And also the science policy interface platforms may uh, contribute to periodic evaluations of the effectiveness of the work on chemicals and waste. For example, um, an SPI platform could provide input to the work of a multi-stakeholder periodic review group. And we also agree that SPI should not compete with other mandates in other forms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, and then we have one last uh, request from uh, Mohamed Khwaja. I will just open the floor for him. And that's the last one on this list. Yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm grateful for uh, allowing me the floor again. Uh, this is with regard to bullet one, which is on the screen. But before I comment on it, uh, I like to read the bullet before it, which says involvement from range of, sorry, uh, which says sharing of authoritative data from government sources that can be used with confidence. Now, when we read this bullet, first bullet, it says, uh, Intergovernment involvement helps to foster harmonized approaches, so and so forth. No, I'm sorry, bullet two. Bullet two says attracting the best expert talent to be involved to foster credibility. Now, uh, on one hand, we are asking for authoritative data from the government. On the other hand, uh, we are also uh, getting involvement of expert talent. Now, are we? What we mean here is the government would be doing it, because to me, these two seems contradictory. Uh, because authoritative uh, data may not necessarily be science-based. Uh, so that's one point. And then uh, a quick comment on the last bullet. Uh, we agree with it, an open and transparent nomination process uh, subject, to an agreed, subject to an agreed criteria base. There should be some sort of criteria which should be met by whosoever is nominated, and it should be transparent. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I think I will walk you through now. Now I I, I would like to close the, the session and walk you to quick quick walk you to the potential function and the number of view expressed on the uh, characteristics of the side policy and to interface. Um, Marina, could you? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, now now from your submission and the discussion uh, take place two pairs on the no november 19 and uh, some of you already mentioned earlier today uh, the the potential function that we can uh, conclude from 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 that all including the horizon scanner uh, scanning and early warning and scientific assessment and communication and outreach 
uh, evidence and the knowledge and then the monitoring. And uh, the next slide, please. The characteristic, list of characteristics that we uh, hear from your views are including the intergovernmental, authoritative, uh, independent, comprehensive, multi stakeholder without a conflict of interest, interdisciplinary, transparent, and not duplicate the existing work. It and also has its own govern, governing body. That that all that we can capture from from your submission and from the discussion to pay earlier, and also from today, uh, meeting. Uh, now I would like to just maybe just five minutes on these two slide for for your comment because this already uh land land out of the time that we planned. Okay, so Jennifer, it looks like there's no one asking for the floor, and perhaps if there are any additional inputs, um, then we can just put it in the chat box, so then we can move forward. All right. So now we, I will uh, turn turn over my microphone to the Carissa. If you would like to continue for the uh, section edge, Carissa, are you there? I am. Thank you so much. So um, we would very much like to to try to get through Section H. Uh, I would ask uh, the secretary if you would please put up paragraphs one and two. Um, for those of you, uh, it is they were re uh, repeated in the agenda today. I do believe we could get through this very quickly um, with your support. Um, so what I would like to just note is a couple of things in paragraph H that, that we put in to address the comments that we heard in our last meeting. And then I'd like to take a very just quick moment to pause to see if, if there are any comments on this. Um, and then we would like to close the meeting with a very quick recap of next steps. So first of all, looking at paragraphs one and two together, you'll see that in paragraph two, there's only one change. So let's just start with paragraph one and note that there is a footnote and you will see the little asterisk. This would become footnote seven in our, in our text, but this is the expanded footnote that instead of adding to the parking lot to address the issue, the point raised by the University of Cape Town last time with respect to the relationship between this section and the rules and procedure, you'll see in red at the bottom of the page that we have added just a reminder that that will, will need to be considered. The deletions in the first part of sentence one of paragraph one address the suggestion by Switzerland to make the competency of the ICC or the International Conference clear that it has the authority to provide uh, for such an update. And also, as Switzerland noted, avoids the suggestion that there's a need for a big, big or a timely process to be initiated by the International Conference before such a decision could be taken. To address the concerns of those that found the shall too prescriptive, we had a very number of those uh, interventions um, at, the, at the last session. We have suggested a may. The deletion of the need phrase, which was the as in the sort of second sentence that was there, to address the concerns suggested by SDI, uh, SDIP that there's always a need uh, and we should not have a, a text that suggests otherwise. The introduction of taking into account the engagement level of inter intergovernmental organizations, which was raised by many, uh, including GAP, the EU, the UK, and Canada, who also noted that, that it's seen some improvements in this area. We also heard from the EU a call for the, an acknowledgement of the role of the SDGs, and we hope that we have taken in that into account with the words and other international efforts related to the Beyond 2020 instrument, as we suspect that there are are other issues as well that, that folks would find important um, and didn't want to limit that consideration. Finally, we've added to the existing effort of the, Indi, uh, the independent evaluation, which has given us some good ideas from this process on how to improve. Um, and that was also noted by many uh, as an important, important addition. 
There were a number of suggestions to delete the timeline. Uh, it said every 10, every five years at the very last part of the sentence. And by deleting it, that would allow the ICCM to assess what the appropriate moment would be as opposed to tying the ICCM down to a particular time frame. This was also part of the Swiss proposal as well as called for by the EU, Canada, uh, the US and others. And I would just note again that we, we would of course have the, the Brazil footnote, uh, not just in the summary about with respect to the beyond 2020 instrument. So there was only one change proposed in paragraph two. Um, uh, Marianne, if you could just flip to that super quickly. Uh, there was a number of requests that it be clear that that any stakeholder could propose an update um, and that the acknowledgement that it will then require a formal adoption by the international conference. So if you go back to paragraph one, you would see that the updates would then be would be taken into account based on, on the list of priorities that that you have all provided in your submissions. So that was very quick, um, but I hope you I hope you had a chance to look at it ahead of time. Um, and that uh, that you had a chance to look at the red and you see in this uh, reflected your your views that you expressed to us uh, when we reviewed section H the first time. So again, we are very, very much running out of time and um, I. Uh, I would like to maybe perhaps use our silent process, if I may, and note that if everybody is content with your views being incorporated here, that you not intervene or you not chat. Um, but if there are something, there is something that you would like to add uh, or any concerns you would like to express, that you would do that now and quickly. Uh, Nalini, with that, may I may I turn it back to you? And uh, again, just in the chat box. Yeah, thank you very much for, for your kind comments. We appreciate them. Yes, we have a um, raised hand from Priscilla, Brazil. Uh, Priscilla, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll try to be very brief, uh, but regarding paragraph one, um, in general terms, we are fine with the proposed text. Uh, but from our perspective, the idea of engagement of relevant intergovernmental organizations and other international efforts and how it could contribute to update the framework is not clear. So would you like to ask for clarification on this idea? Uh, but indeed, we prefer to we would prefer to remove this reference from from the paragraph. And talking about paragraph two, uh, we think it's important to consider the idea behind rule 23. Uh, that is why we prefer to maintain the original version in which there is reference to governments. Uh, so maybe uh, as we have not reached consensus on this item, uh, we would like to kindly ask the co-facilitators to keep the term government in brackets and not uh, instead of removing it. Thank you. I think, Carissa, um, I don't see any more hands or anything in the chat, so perhaps we can move on. Okay, yeah, it looks like Jacqueline has asked for the floor. Jacqueline, for some reason, okay, now I see your hand, okay. Jacqueline, from Lina, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, and sorry, I guess I have been having problems with raising my hand today, so, so sorry for any, any problems I might have caused. Um, so I will speak a few things on behalf of UNEP, and then one thing on behalf of the INC organizations. Um, and uh, the, the first one on behalf of, of UNEP uh, is in relation to the, the paragraph two as well and the updates and how this uh, in a way talks to the rules of procedure and how things needs to be, be done, mainly because of the use of the word stakeholders or governments or uh, uh, there needs to be some kind of reflection as well of, of, on what we have there and uh, what the instrument might be able to do. 
and um, on behalf of uh, IOMC, we would like to, to suggest the deletion of the text in red that starts the engagement of relevant intergovernmental organization and other international efforts relevant to the Beyond 2020 instrument. Because we, we think that that will not, in a way, be one of, of the prerequisites to initiate any updates of Beyond 2020. And any um, issue related to engagement of organizations need to be part of other, uh, other parts of the, of the instrument. For example, um, in the evaluation side of the reporting that we were talking about before, uh, on, on how to be, we are making progress as the, the whole uh, community of the stakeholders. So uh, th those were my, my two points. Um, and uh, then also on behalf of, of UNEP, the issue of update, uh, and this maybe comes because of the background and wording that we use in, in other instruments. Um, it might not only be the need to update, but the need to revise uh, as well uh, the, the instrument as such. Um, the, the revision process uh, might be different from an update because revision process might also imply looking back to indicators and targets with updated methodology and look back and see. So it is not only changing the text, but also seeing if we can measure and track back as well. Those are concepts used, for example, in the Stockholm Convention um, for, for effectiveness evaluation. And I don't know if it will be also used by the Minamata, but it's part of the, of the thinking always when you are assessing and trying to see if updates are needed. You also need to revise what you have and, and look back, not only to the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If Nalini, there's nobody on our list, I think I just there. I we have one more, one more for uh, Felix from Switzerland. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's a small comment. I think, uh, thank you very much also for the revised version. My question is mainly, do we, do we need the word initiate? For me, in the sufficient said international conference um, may update the Beyond Instrument, because how we, uh, normally it wouldn't be that somebody who makes a proposal after consultation and so on. But I, in my feeling, we don't need this word. We can make it shorter, more clear, because anyhow, any decision by the ICCM, and then we have to agree on a process. But I think it would not be very usual to say may initiate, because it would also restrain the competence of ICCM to change its own text. So I think that would be um, a limitation that might not be necessary. Thank you. Okay, I think we're done then. In terms of Great, that's excellent. Um, all right, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Felix, for that. Much appreciated. Um, we're always looking to shorten, and that, that never makes anybody unhappy. Um, and it does sound that there is uh, some points of convergence between uh, Brazil and UNEP uh, with respect to UNEP on behalf of the IOMC organization. So that also is is very helpful for us. Uh, we will uh, listen again to the recording and take this into account and, and come back to you with, um, with some revisions. Thank you so much. So on that, I would like to turn to next steps before we close. Um, as you know from our many discussions, this virtual working group had a very, very large mandate with lots of different sessions and, and as well as the science policy interface. We have made a lot of progress, um, and I do want to just thank all of you for your for your efforts on that. We were hoping that we would be reviewing all of our progress at this point, um, but but we are we are still, of course, discussing some substance. So here's what we have left. Um, we have left section C. To go back to section C, there have been some ongoing discussions between uh, the government of Canada and uh, the group of NGOs on the remaining brackets that the, the group of NGOs had had uh, asked for, or maybe just sort of a, a discussion item with respect to inter in the international cooperation section. Uh, we would like to revert back to that. We have been informed that the, those discussions have resulted in some further suggestions that may resolve some of the outstanding issues in that paragraph. Uh, so we will go back to section C. Uh, in section G, we will need to review all of the provisions that uh, we have made as a result of your comments. 
uh, over the last couple of weeks on section G, paragraph one and two were already in the summary that was posted. We were waiting to complete the discussion today, so we will have an entire all of section G laid out for you um, for your consideration. Uh, and then, of course, we'll also take into account what we heard today with respect to perhaps some of that that not being necessary, and we'll have to find a way to to make suggestions with respect to that. The other things that we have on our list of things to do is to sort of circle back to you and to update you on Japan's proposal for sections G and H, um, which are also relevant for virtual working group one. And there have been some discussions there as well as uh, some discussion of the indicators and some of the workshops that might be up and coming, et cetera. So we will try to circle back with a, a, a closure or a further consideration of that proposal. And we will um, we need to go back to our conversation from last week with our, our last session with respect to section E, where we sought your guidance prior to, to putting some some suggestions on the table for consideration. We thought the section E discussion was very informative and that we should be able to, to put something in front of you with respect to that. And of course, uh, we had a discussion today on the SPI and we need to find a way to uh, to summarize that. So we still have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, Chair Port and I are trying hard to keep up with you and to make sure you have what you need for these meetings to be efficient and, and effective in meeting the mandate from the, from the president and the, and the bureau. So uh, please look for, th those are the outstanding issues. Please prepare yourselves to, to discuss those. Um, and we will let you know sort of early next week which agenda items we're going to try to tackle in next week's meeting. And then, then we, of course, will obviously, as you I'm sure have figured out, need our extra meeting that we had hoped to avoid uh, in, in the latter part of January. So uh, we'll do our best to give you a good agenda, a very focused agenda, so that we can, can wrap up our work and move our recommendations forward to to the bureau as a group, and I guess then the bureau and the president will decide what, what next steps are going to be needed to get us to July. Now we need uh, tier upon if there's anything that you wanted to add, please do know we need anything on mix. And of course, uh, our usual tremendous thank you to the secretariat for your facilitation and your work to help us get to today. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a raised hand on site from Iran. Can I give him the floor? Sure. May I just check with Chair Park first and see if there's anything that that she would like to add to our next step summary before before we do that? No, nothing. Thank you. Iran, you have the floor. Thank you, Nalini. Uh, just uh, try to be short. Uh, I'm not agree to conditional uh, to conditionalize the international conference on uh, uh, the update uh, process, uh, and uh, uh, because of that, I may ask you to delete the uh, language uh, which comes in red from the engagement of relevant thing, blah 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 blah, and. Uh, the second thing is that uh, I propose uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to delete initiate and instead of that uh, the uh, the international conference may uh, consider an update process of the beyond. So uh, uh, and uh, my last uh, uh, point is uh, I would like to. Uh, support uh, the comment made by uh, my by our Brazilian colleagues on the um, paragraph two, and uh, I also would like to ask to uh, ask you to keep the government in the sec in the um, second paragraph. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ron. Okay, with that, um, again, <laughs> we are over time as usual, um, so we would like to, to take this time to thank you for your time, to close the meeting, and to ask you to please keep a very close eye on your email and your uh, and the CYCLE website with respect to our, uh, our section of that website so that you remain up to date and, and ready for, for what we will try to tackle next. Thank you so much, uh, much appreciated, and uh, we look forward to uh, you all having a happy, a happy 2021.
Thank you. Bye-bye.